Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another BT Nirithal build guide. Today we're going to be covering the Phoenix Strike Assassin here on Max Roll. This is the guide that I made. If you are interested in reading it yourself, the link will be in the description below. Now the Phoenix Strike Assassin is actually pretty versatile. It can do plenty of things at once. It has virtually no immunities and it has a lot of AoE damage. It even does pretty good against single target bosses. So we attack with Phoenix Strike, we build up charges, and then we expend these charges with the finishing move such as like Dragonflight, Dragon Claw, Dragon Talon. And then after that, we actually end up using death sentry to be able to clear up the rest of the mobs once you get the hang of it it's actually pretty fast currently it is in c tier due to its clunkiness and once things are actually on the screen all over the place it's a little bit hard to see which charge you're going to be expending when you actually use a finishing move the reason why that's important charge one does fire meteor that hits the ground charge two does a lightning strike that's kind of like chain lightning aoe around you and then cold does like this frozen orb kind of similar thing that freezes all monsters around you. The freeze is fantastic for an amount of CC and crowd control, giving you an edge on the battlefield. In addition to all these damage abilities, Assassin in general is very good with crowd control through Mind Blast and Cloak of Shadows. Fade gives resistances and damage reduction, making her very tanky. An incredibly unique gameplay. We could definitely say that again. It's very unique in that the charges it does require build up time for damage it's hard to view the charges in combat like we explained and there are a lot of hut keys on this build if you actually want to pilot this correctly as far as the skill tree the one point wonders we're going to be using burst of speed cloak of shadows mind blast fade shadow warrior dragon flight Dragon Claw, Dragon Talon, and Death Sentry. As you can see, there are a lot of hotkeys. For maxed out skills, we're going to be maxing them out in this order, which is Phoenix Strike, Fists of Fire, Claws of Thunder, Blades of Ice, and Claw Mastery. We have a slider here in the guide if you actually want to go check that out and follow us throughout the guide. As far as attributes go, just put enough strength and dex into where your gear and the rest of it goes into vitality. Just quickly going over some gear options here, we have Bartux, Plague, Greater Talons, some Crazy Claws that'll be plus 6 Phoenix Strike, 6 Death Sentry, 6 Fade, a nice starter variant which can be farmed from Charcy, 3 Martial Arts. The most important things here are going to be plus the skills, Assassin skills, Martial Arts, and Attack Speed. Again, because we need that Attack Speed for the Charge Up and the Finishing Move. We can pretty much farm anything. We have very good Density Clear and we have decent Boss Killing Time. There's a lot of different farming spots that are actually recommended on this build. It has pretty much no immunities. Again, we do cold, fire, and lightning damage, as well as physical damage through the death century. Nothing really stops this build. For the mercenary, we want Might Infinity to increase our mercenary's damage output, and the infinity will increase our death century damage and all of our elemental damage, making us overall stronger on the battlefield. For our breakpoints in IES, we really want to hit 60 IES or increase the attack speed with Plague Greater Talons. This will allow us to use Fade as our main skill rather than Burst of Speed, making us tankier and not having to lose any survivability. Now, the way we actually do this is using an Endarial's Visage on the Helmet 320 Gloves in combination with the claws. Plus the skills, resistances cannot be frozen, life and attack speed are very important here. They cannot be frozen, of course, just so continue to attack even when we get hit with like Frost Nova or any chill. What we're currently using is Plague Talons. Again, as best as we can possibly get, if we can get three to Phoenix, three to Death Sentry and three to Fade, the best one, three to Death Sentry base, that'll actually save us a ton of points on the skill tree. As you can see here with the skill tree, if we have it in a staff mod, we can save ourselves one, two, three, four, and then five points by not putting it into the sentry and just getting it from our claws. Now for the budget build, we can farm this stuff pretty much from Charcy or from some bosses in the earlier stages like Nightmare and Dariel and Nightmare Mephisto. We have Wisdom for the Cannot Be Frozen and the Mana Per Kill to sustain us. We have these claws that we can shop from Anya in Hell, which are three to martial arts. They usually take about 10 minutes-ish a piece if you're constantly resetting through the red portal. The two-piece Death's Hand is actually also a pretty good combination, giving you 30 increased attack speed. Cannot be frozen if you don't have wisdom. 15 all resist, and then also lifesteal for any of the physical damage that you end up dealing. Another good combination is Zarus Iron Stay with Zarus Iron Steel, giving you attack rating bonus if you put them in to allow you to hit the monsters easier. But plus the skills, faster run walk, resistances, life, attack rating, cannot be frozen, and hit recovery are all very important for starting off this build. 
we actually use Dragonflight as well as Enigma to be able to maneuver around in the end game. But prior to Enigma, Dragonflight is a pretty good pseudo teleport. Not only Dragonflight allows us to move around quickly, but it also expends a charge, allowing us to deal DPS on the target we land on. Now, pretty much the only thing that's changed for Hardcore is that we put a lot of points into Fade. See, we have 38% increased damage reduction, 71 all resistances, including the curse reduction as well. And then we also have the weapon block in order for us to actually block. We can also use Fists of Fire, Claws of Thunder, and Blades of Ice to be able to do different types of elemental damage if we are really hyper focused focused on a certain area. So we're fighting a bunch of cold immunes, we could use Claws of Thunder or Fists of Fire. Say we're coming across a bunch of lightning immunes, well now we can use Blades of Ice, Fists of Fire. So this build is all about choosing your charges and which one actually fits the battlefield and the situation you're currently in, making this a very flexible, versatile build overall. Again, the player's skill cap is actually pretty high on this build, so I might not recommend it as your first ever build to start with, but it is a lot of fun once you actually get familiar with it. In the meantime, thank you all for watching. Hope you found this video informational and helpful. Much love to all of you. If you did enjoy it, be sure to like that video and subscribe as well as if you want to see me live, we stream quite often on twitch.tv slash You can find links for all that stuff down below in the description. Until next time, you're all beasts.